uh, we're very excited to uh, have a featured presentation by Jennifer Lavasser, who is a museum specialist here at the National Air and Space Museum. And she's going to be talking about the discovery, uh, champion of the space shuttle era. Thank you very much. Um, I'm filling in, unfortunately, for Valerie Neal, who is the space shuttle curator here at the Air and Space Museum. Um, she's ill today, so thankfully, um, there are a few of us around that know a little bit about Discovery, and uh, we've had definitely a lot of time to think about Discovery um, in the last few months. Um, it's been the primary part of uh, many of our lives, um, especially through the month, through the month of April. Um, but I want to talk today about Discovery and why it is here. Uh, on April 17th, Discovery flew into the Washington area. It was flown on the back of a 747. That's how the space shuttles, of course, are transported around the U.S. when they're not being flown into space. So it was transported here from the Kennedy Space Center, left early in the morning and arrived uh, at Dulles Airport sometime around 9.45, I think it was, and it made some fly arounds of Washington, D.C., which were obviously from the pictures here. You can tell it was quite beautiful really sparked a lot of interest in the area. I think as somebody who's been interested in space history for a long time, um, I never really saw much um, excitement in this area for the space shuttle, um, other than the folks that come here to the museum, of course, we have lots of enthusiasm here. But things really changed, I think, April 17th, when m millions of people basically got to see the space shuttle up close and personal flying over the city, and it was really quite beautiful. Uh, I was not here downtown. I was out waiting for Discovery out at the Udvar-Hazy Center, which is where Discovery land. The Udvar-Hazy Center out near Dulles Airport is where Discovery is currently housed. Uh, and it was convenient that there's an airport nearby. Actually, that was the point of that building, was to make it near an airport so we're able to fly things into the facility. And the 747 landed somewhere, I think, right around 10.45, 11 o'clock. And that was the start of a lot of activity here at the museum. Discovery was lifted off the back of the 747 out on the, one of the aprons out at Dulles Airport, and it was wheeled over to our building. The big day for us was uh, what we call the cel uh, Discovery Celebration Day, which was April 19th. We had an incredible uh, day out at the Udvarhazy Center, beautiful weather. We were able to put Enterprise, uh, the approach and landing test vehicle for the shuttle fleet, nose to nose with Discovery, which was a really unique occasion. We also had almost 30 NASA astronauts, former and current, who were, a were able to join us that day. Uh, the speakers included John Glenn, who you see in the picture there, and our director, uh, General Daly, and Charlie Bolden, uh, director of NASA. So. We had quite the complement of astronauts, and it was a really special day for us at the museum. We think that was actually the largest number of astronauts who'd ever been here at the same time at the museum. So it was a really special experience for all of us. So there's the nose-to-nose -nose shot of Discovery and Enterprise, both with their tail cones attached. Discovery was attached after it got pulled into the space hangar, and Enterprise's came off once it was, uh, once it, um, was delivered to New York, uh, and if any of you got to see that coverage uh, earlier in June, the Enterprise was lifted, carried up to New York uh, to JFK Airport and then transported by barge to the Intrepid Museum in Manhattan. So if you're ever in the New York area, make sure you go take a look at Enterprise, which is now on the flight deck of the Intrepid. So why Discovery? There are three orbiters uh, remaining in the space shuttle fleet at the end of the program, and then there was Enterprise, of course. We'd had Enterprise here in our museum's collection since the mid-1980s, um, and the building that it was in out at the Udvar-Hazy Center was prepared for a space shuttle. Now, it was wheeled in with the idea that someday we might get a real flown space shuttle, and we never really knew if that was going to happen, but we certainly pushed for that because we wanted a flown shuttle here in the National Collection. That's something I should make a comment on here. Uh, the National Collection is everyone's collection. It's your collection, it's mine, it belongs to all of us as the American public. And so we make a really special effort to make sure that what we have in this Smithsonian Collection is the best representation of a historical artifact. And Discovery, by far, was the most historic of the space shuttles. It flew 39 missions and covered every single type of mission that could be flown. 
So commercial, Defense Department, Scientific, Planetary, Hubble, Mir, ISS, it flew everything. It spent the most number of days in space, the most, most miles, the most, um, pretty much the most of everything. So it's kind of the top of the heap as far as space shuttles go. And this is just a quick rundown, and I don't want to talk about all of these, but this will show you sort of the broad range of firsts and other accomplishments made by Discovery and the crews of Discovery. Flew its first mission in 1984 and flew its last mission, STS, sorry, someone's going to get me if I say this wrong, but I think it was STS-133. Um, and the range of accomplishments are wide, including flying both of the post uh, tragedy missions, so after Challenger and after Columbia. And then on the right-hand side, that column is all of the different kinds of accomplishments made by the crew. So we have things like first African-American commander, first woman pilot, Eileen Collins. Um, there's just an incredible list of things, and I could keep going on and on about all the accomplishments. But uh, what I really wanted to show you was the last picture, which is Discovery on Display. If you haven't gotten a chance to go out to the Udvar Hazy Center, please take the time to go out and see it. Discovery is a really unique vehicle. It will always be the most complete, the most historic vehicle of the space shuttle fleet. We chose to display Discovery as complete as possible. We asked NASA to remove as little of it as they had to. Certain things were removed because they, were, uh, they had contained hazardous chemicals, but for the most part, Discovery is as flown on its last mission, which is, of course, really special to us, really important for us as the Smithsonian. And um, a lot of times people will ask why Discovery, as far as of the choice of the three, why would we want Discovery other than that? Um, we wanted it because it's the most historic, but also because we wanted to give others the opportunity to tell different parts of the space shuttle story. We tell the space shuttle story in the historic sense, um, and we're letting others tell the stories of things like uh, approach and landing, which will be told now at the Intrepid Museum. Um, the California Science Center, where Endeavor is going to be going this year, uh, will be telling the story of launch. They're hoping to put a space shuttle in a launch configuration, so it'll be vertical with solid rocket boosters and external tank. And the Kennedy Space Center is hoping to tell a story of the shuttle in orbit. So it will be tilted and there will be um, a, an arm, a Canada arm, extending from the payload bay with the doors open. So each of the, the institutions that have received a space shuttle will treat them differently. And so here at uh, Smithsonian, we're treating it in a very, uh, very, I think, practical way, one that we were very used to. The space shuttle sits exactly in the same position as Enterprise sat before it. But it's a really special uh, artifact here at the museum, and I would love to take questions from you on either why Discovery looks the way it does or anything about it. Um, we get a very common question, which uh, I want to show you kind of, I'll give everyone the same uh, everyone the same answer if anybody's wondering. If you look at a space shuttle, they look pretty rough. They don't look clean. If you ever saw Enterprise when it was at the Udvar Hazy Center, it was sparkling white and beautiful. Well, I think Discovery is just as beautiful, but for a different reason. Discovery looks dirty. It kind of looks like a used car. And the reason for that is because it has to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere all the time, and so it gets all of these really dark marks on it. The heat shield is all scarred looking. It's got these white streaks on it. But that gives it a lot of character, and it's a great story for us to be able to tell. Um, and that's part of its history. We don't want to clean it up. I told someone recently, we're not going to clean it because that's not dirt. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a different kind of dirt in a way. <laughs> but um, it's definitely used, and it's beautiful because it's used. So uh, if you have any questions about the space shuttle, I'm happy to answer them. Well, thank you, Jennifer, mm -hmm. for a wonderful presentation. Mm -hmm. And. If you have any questions, please come up to the microphone and take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions about discovery. Jennifer, can yes. you compare the mid-deck we have here on display to sure. discovery? Sure, absolutely. Uh, one thing that we can't do in this exhibit because it's a lot smaller space than the Udvar Hazy Center is represent the size of the space shuttle. So one of the things that we decided to do in here was to give you an experience that you can't have out at the Udvar Hazy Center with the real discovery. So the mid-deck over here in the corner is a full-size representation of this very small portion right here of Discovery. Um, so the front end up here uh, it falls to about right here, I think, on Discovery. 
Uh, this is essentially the sort of crew portion of the vehicle. That's a portion of discovery that uh, people would have been in at all times. Um, but it's where the primary amount of activity goes on. This is where they live and work. This is where they do all the things that we do here on Earth except in zero gravity or microgravity. Um, and so we can't, because the space is very small, and make sure you go and take a look inside there, the space is incredibly small, it's just too difficult for us to get all of you inside Discovery and back out. The other thing I like to tell people is, you know, one thing that a lot of um, young people and, and anybody really don't really consider about a space shuttle is the fact that it's intended to be used in microgravity, which means it's more about volume than about square footage. So we might think of this room as being big because it's 5,000 square feet, but the shuttle is really, really small because the square footage is really small, but they use all of that vertical space, and so they're floating around, and it works a lot differently when they're up in space. But it's just incredibly difficult for us to get people inside. But one of the things we're doing, obviously, other than having the mid-deck represented here, is we'll have some virtual reality-type kiosks where people can navigate through the various um, interior spaces of the shuttle so that they can zoom in and see all the really cool stuff. But here we can actually show you sort of what it looks like and what it might feel like to be inside. Can you say a little something about the engine over here? <laughs> sure. I should have gone around the gallery and explained it a little bit better. Uh, this is um, our only real, full, and complete space shuttle main engine. Uh, we received this uh, a few years ago. And one of the things that's interesting about the space shuttle program, of course, is that everything is reusable and interchangeable. So the parts that go into the space shuttle main engine, um, this particular one, have been interchanged with each other from various missions. So this is a compilation of all kinds of different pieces that have flown on different missions, but it's complete. Um, the engines that are on Discovery out at the Odvarhazy Center are um, not original. They're also missing a very big component, which is this section right here, the sort of guts of the engine, the working part, the turbo pump, and so on. Um, NASA is reusing those parts of the space shuttle main engines for future work. So what's on Discovery right now are just the nozzles. So there are three nozzles, two of which flew in space, um, but one was a test nozzle. So they're actually weighted inside. You can't really see any of that. And that's part of the reason that we wanted to represent this here is this is an actual flown historic engine, you can see all of the pieces and parts and just how complicated this machine is uh, here and up close, and you don't really get to see that with Discovery. Thank you again, Great. Jennifer, for, for a wonderful presentation.